What is, is it called? Jelking. Jelking. Which, yeah, which is like this practice to increase penile length. The safest way for length is a traction device. So you can buy traction devices online. There is what we call small penis anxiety, right? People who really feel body dysmorphia. It's does size matter? People overestimate what average is. So they think average is like six inches erect. Average is more like 5.1 to 5.6 inches, depending on the study. What about girth? When you have a little more girth, it can stimulate more of the clitoris, right? You're not just focusing on the top, you're also getting the side of it. So it can be helpful, absolutely, to be more girthy. Are there any other viral trends that you've kind of had to correct? Yeah, so there was one on TikTok for a while. There was um, a lot of people talking about what's called jelking. Which what is, is it called? Jelking. Jelking. Which, yeah, which is like this practice to increase penile length. And so it's like you make an O with OK sign with your finger and you actually like um, it sort of slowly extend the length of the penis over time. There's exercises, stretching exercises, essentially. And so people would be like, oh, I did this and I increased my penile length and it was great. And so they were talking about this a lot. And, um, and actually, uh, that sounds very safe, right? Like, oh, I'm just stretching. Like, what's the big deal? But sometimes, and, and you can probably relate as most men, when you tell them to do something, they don't just do it. They want to do it the best, Right. And so they're like, they're like, you don't just, you tell someone to do something that might improve their life. They're not going to just do it. They're going to go 10 X and do it even more. Right. And so there's actually some people who would come into the urologist because they've been doing this. And, you know, my colleagues have talked to me. It's, it's, it's even in some published data. People would jelk and they would come in and they would develop erectile dysfunction because they've now damaged their penis. And that's not necessarily reversible. And so it's, it, you know, it's like there are ways to safely lengthen potentially, um, but jelking is not one of them. What yeah. are the ways? So the, the safest way for length is a traction device. So you can buy traction devices online. These are sort of devices that slowly extend your penis uh, with a little bit of pressure over time. And they, ha and they are meant to be very minimal prep, like minimal tension over time. So you, there are some that you will use for six hours a day and like go to sleep with them. Um, There's some that you can get that you can do 30 minutes twice a day, but they are a commitment, right? You have to be like doing it a lot. Um, and, and then they do work and they've been shown to increase penile length by about two centimeters um, when you've done it for two centimeters yeah for prolonged periods of time for months on end then you will see an increase um, and that's on average right so some may see a little more some may see a little less but that's generally what they've seen in the studies um, and so yeah I think there are ways to do it but it's a commitment right you have to be disciplined you have to keep doing it and you have to is that what you really want to spend your time doing, right? And that's fine if you do. No judgment, by all means, you know. Um, but I think that that's just, that's probably the safest. Now, there's other things that are available. There's surgical options. There's, um, you know, those are, there's, there's device, you know, but basically surgical options are, are available to lengthen and in, enhance girth. Um, girth, probably the safest is to do fillers, like, like women get fillers on their face. There's the same sort of hyaluronic acid fillers that you can get injected into the penis, but they don't last forever. They're like 18 months or so and they'll dissolve. Um, so there are options. Is that safe? Um, you know, we don't have a ton of data, but uh, uh, like I wouldn't inject anything else. So there are like permanent fillers. People have like in jail have injected all sorts of things in their penis, like so, you know, like all sorts of things, which please don't inject your penis with anything. Uh, but if, you know, you're going to, if you are very intent on doing it and you've sort of talked to your doctor about it and you know it's not like a psychological issue that needs, you know, attention from a psychologist, because there is what we call small penis anxiety, right? People who really feel body dysmorphia, like there's something wrong with them. And that require not requires, but sh should have attention from a psychologist so you can work on your thoughts around it. But, you know, if you don't have a dysmorphia and you just want a bigger penis like I think that's the safest option in terms of um, in terms of an intervention there are some um, you know people who will use vacuum erection devices or penis pumps there's no evidence in the literature that this actually results in enhanced girth but some people report that they notice that again I think it's all temporary when you're using these traction devices and pumps like I don't know that you're going to have a lasting effect but I don't know we haven't looked at it in the long term in terms of like scientific data. It's only anecdotes, like what patients tell us and what we see. Um, so I think ultimately, like, 
I, I wish, I wish there was a way, right? Like women can enhance their breasts, they can get breast augmentations, but men still don't have that option, right? To enhance their genitalia if they really want to um, in a like a permanent, meaningful way yet, um, in a very safe way. And I wish we had it because I think men, just like women should have that option if they want mm-hmm. it, right? Um, but at this time, like you have one penis, it is very important. And if something happens to it, now you're stuck with that complication. And so mm-hmm. I, I just think it's really important to think about that before you proceed with anything that's irreversible. Now, I mean, this I wanted to cover this later on, but we'll just do it right now since we're on the subject. I mean, mm-hmm. size. Does size matter? Yeah. So this comes up all the time, right? Because we are in a society where size is revered, right? Like you will see people joking about it. You will see, I mean, even my my children will joke about their penis size and their prepubescent boys, right? Like where did they learn this from? We don't talk about it at home. Like they learned it from their peers. So um, this is something that's pervasive, right? People automatically assume bigger is better. The reality is when you look at the data, people overestimate what average is. So they think average is like six inches erect. Average is more like 5.1 to 5.6 inches, depending on the study you look at. Um, That's erect, not flaccid. Um, And then, you know, so fine, average is overestimated. We're really bad as human beings at estimating. So when you actually look at people who, you know, you show them like this is a a five inch penis, a six inch penis, this is a seven inch penis. What are you estimating? So when you have like an average size penis, they tend to overestimate the size. They think it's like six or seven inches, six inches. Um, And then when you have a slightly smaller than average penis, you tend to underestimate. And when it's bigger, you tend to overestimate. So we're just really bad at one estimating. And when you, and a lot of men will measure their phallus and, you know, it's so variable. How warm is it in the room? Like what, you know, how aroused are you in that moment? Like if you're more aroused, you might be a little bit, tiny bit longer a tiny bit girthier, right? And so it's so variable that like, it's hard to say like, okay, this is my number. Like, this is how big I am, right? Um, And then it's, so in terms of like pleasure, right? Because I think that's what God thinks. Oh, if I have a bigger penis, I will more easily be able to get my partner to orgasm. It will feel better for her in a heterosexual relationship. And the reality is that's not necessarily true. Like, of course, there are women who prefer longer penises. They enjoy stimulation, deep stimulation during sex. But that's not the majority. I would say 85% of women need clitoral stimulation. And the clitoris is above the urethra. It's the area that is very sensitive. It is the homologue of the penis. So it is essentially exactly the same. If you like cut open a cadaver and you look at the anatomy of the clitoris and the penis, the clitoris and the penis look identical. The clitoris is just smaller and internal, whereas the penis is external. So if you stimulate the clitoris, you will reliably reach orgasm in the majority of women. And that doesn't require a penis necessarily, right? You can do that with your hand, with your mouth, with a toy, with a whole bunch of different things and not necessarily from penetration. Now, yes, can will you um, be stimulating the clitoris when you penetrate? Yes, to some degree, because the clitoris is above the urethra. And so indirectly, you will be stimulating it. And some women, like I said, the anatomy is variable. So some women may orgasm more easily just through penetration alone. But the large majority of women need either penetration and clitoral or stimulation or just clitoral stimulation to climax. And so the reality is that size is not necessary for pleasure. Size is not necessary for a good orgasm. And it is it is something that we have just made into this big thing. Um, and if you ask mo- women, like when you we do surveys of women, 85% of women are like, I'm happy with my partner's size and I'm totally fine with it. And it's like 45% of men who feel like they're satisfied with their size. So it's a big dichotomy because we've made it to feel like it's so um, linked to masculinity or the ability to provide pleasure, but the reality is not so much. And when you look at even anatomy for women, the vaginal length uh, before it's engorged and aroused is about three to three and a half inches. So if you think about it, like if you're really large, you can't even really penetrate the entire vaginal length. And so there's actually products that you can wear like buffers so that you don't hurt your partner when you have sex with them if you're a little bit lot larger than they are and so it's not it's it's sort of like a fit right some people um have a better like have a longer vagina they may enjoy a longer penis but again it's not universal right it's not universal what about girth yeah so girth um again i think girth is 
because there's the clitoris goes deep into the pelvis and it goes around the vagina there's like the clitoral bulbs and the the legs of the clitoris so when you have a little more girth it can stimulate more of the clitoris right you're not just focusing on the top you're also getting the side of it so it can be helpful absolutely to be more girthy but there's a limit so in fact when they uh, this actually came out from uh, people who do male to uh, female to male surgery when they were building phalluses they realized that they were making them too girthy and like it was actually difficult to have sex so they actually had to look at like what kind they, what they did was they looked at what kind of sex toys women are buying to decide like what was the right size for the majority of women because they were like oh we were just making them too big and like now this person who wanted who wants a penis is like not able to use it because it's too big for the partner to accommodate it and so really it's like if you look at what type of sex toys women buy they buy a little bit longer than average and the same girth as average, which is, you know, about five inches or so. So um, it's it's very similar to the average guy. They're not buying those really obscenely large sex toys. Like it's just not, I mean, they might for a gag gift or something, but most women are not using those to pleasure themselves. And so that doesn't necessarily, meaning you don't really need a lot more than average to pleasure a woman. What is average girth? Average girth is about four to five inches around. Okay. Yeah. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.